Now, this was one of my more popular projects, so I thought I'd do an extra video with some of the uh, questions that you've been putting in the comments answered, and also there's uh, some extra footage I've got of the testing and various bits and bobs, and also we did make a couple of changes to it while I was going through the process, which happened off camera. So, I thought I'd show you. Now, to get the lid off, first you have to take the seat off. Now, this is the original seat, which we've reupholstered, and to hold it on, Rex come up with an ingenious idea. It's held on with a bungee strap. Simple, but effective. Right, let's take this bit out. Now the tub's only actually held in with four bolts, so we're gonna whip them out, and they're just down here. There's none at the front. <laughs> Put captive nuts on them all, you know, gotta think ahead. Disconnect the lads. And then with a little bit of jiggling and wiggling around, it does come off. There we go, there we go. And then off it comes. Mixed emotions are taking over. I've come to realize I've got no control. I can't take this anymore. Now the tub, you didn't really see much of this. We was quite uh, quite lucky and there's like a metal ring which runs all the way around the base of it and we could cut into that and weld our tags onto it to fix it down onto the frame. But also we've used that for the earth, for the lights. So all the lights got wired up and then we just like kind of put a bolt through that little bit of uh, metal and then when that bolts back onto the chassis that kind of connects the earth up. Now the only thing we did have to do, we had to cut a little bit out in the corners here because like the wheels are as far apart as we could possibly get them so we had to just shave a little bit out. So we had to cut that metal ring here, but that didn't matter, it's all good. And that's that. Right, start at the front. Steering system, absolutely fantastic. Would not change that at all, spot on. Now this little uh, gaggle of wires and stuff, this is basically the front of the loom off the motorbike. Uh, the only thing extra we had to do with this, we had to stick it in a bag, because we did take this out in the uh, wet once, and that got all full of water, and that kind of, didn't really like that. Uh, and then there's this little scoopy bit here. Uh, this basically, helps the air come through that little nose at the, at the front of the dodger and then it kind of helps it up into the radiator because we did boil it up a couple of times but that was mainly down to us like thrashing the nuts off it like bouncing it off the rev limiter a little bit too much. Generally it got warm but it did cool pretty well. One thing that did change was the brakes. Originally I wanted to use the uh, front brake lever a master cylinder off the motorbike but because I'm using a go-kart rear caliper they require a lot more fluid to, to activate them. So you'd pull it in and you had to like pump the hell out of it to get it to like squeeze it all the way back. I mean, it did work, but I could hardly say to old Sticky Boy. So your brakes will work at 100 miles an hour, but only on the eighth pull. So the uh, solution was uh, just a simple foot brake on the actual master cylinder thing that come with the go-kart and you look at this now and you think why, why didn't I just do that to start with well it was kind of didn't think I had enough room for this because when we first started to put it all together it was kind of like thinking that your foot would have to be somewhere down here but yeah brakes work pretty well which is a, a bit strange really because most of my machines the brakes are absolutely terrible now under here is the petrol tank and if you're wondering why it's got Rick's mum's shower cap on it which I can say she's fine with it's all right. It's because at speed, we found that whatever air pressure was going on, it was dragging fuel out of the vents and everything around here was just getting covered in petrol and then was getting loads of muck stuck to it. And I don't like that. So we put that on, job solved. This little frame down here is where you stick the pole, which of course we had. But there was something I set up which never actually got used in the video. At the end of the pole, there's a little bit of cable. And if we shove this down here, so there's a wire connected up to the horn switch so when you switch the horn it sets off a small pyro which sets off a sparkler so you've got your pole all sparking and it'll look like you've just nicked it off the fair but in the daytime it just looked rubbish it gave off a bit of smoke and you couldn't really see the sparks so we never bothered doing it but it's got it flipped it up on its side uh, so you can see everything looks pretty cool 
But we, uh, we put these little skid plates on the corner here, because when you want to turn a corner, you know, anything above like 10 or 15 mile an hour, like a Robin Reliant, it just wants to kind of pitch in the corners. And then if it was to go down too deep and hit the tyre, then that would grip up and you'd got sent into a woo-ha of an accident. So we've put them on there to try and stop that. But the thing I've noticed, now I've lifted it up, is the amount of damage that's been done from all the gravel and the grit off the airfields. It's like the whole thing has been shot blasted. We what? I took so much time and effort painting it and making it all shiny. Look what it's done! It's not acceptable, RAF bases. Eh? You need some road sweepers. So everything really is absolutely brilliant on this. Rear axle fine, the tyres are fine, the electrics are all good, seating position, everything like that was all pretty spot on. One thing I would like to do though is to get it on a dyno because with the exhaust system we've got and the air box the way it is, I don't think it's running its absolute best. It could do with jetting uh, and maybe a little bit of fiddling around. They could probably could do with some silencers on the exhaust really, but of course naturally you just want this thing to be as loud as possible because you know, I like that. But uh, but yeah, but the problem we've got is, I think the, the wheels are too far apart to go on a bike dyno, but obviously not far enough apart to go on a car dyno. So if there's any system out there that can that can take this, then you know, Maybe drop me a message and it could uh, potentially go even faster. So first test, it was like completely bare, there was no tyre, wasn't even a seat. I just had a bit of plywood clamped to the back of the frame. And uh, I do wear helmets for the test, only this time I forgot to actually do it up. Duh. But with that all sorted, it performed really well. It was good, nothing fell off it, never crushed it. Shake down over, park firm, eh? Pass test, just wants uh, different gearing. So, did a few calculations, changed the gearing, took it back up again for a second run, this time with the tyre around it. So, gear sorted, comfort's still an issue, but it doesn't matter because it's just a test. Next problem we've got is the runway that I'm using is too short and it's too bumpy. But, the old BBC boys convinced the RF base up the road to let us have a go on that. Nice long runway, nice and smooth, boom, give it some welly! <laughs> up to another Guinness World Record! I'm really pleased with this one. I do look at the Dodger and think, first, you made a smashing job of that, and that's all good. But anyway, see you on the next project, people. Furs out. Right, you're going to look into it. Yeah? No, 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 come here, come here, come here. Well, stand here. And you go, 100 miles an hour! 100 miles an hour? Yeah! <laughs> well done, Jay.